Sharon is an Israeli human rights and peace activist. She is the founder and director of the Israeli disarmament movement. In recent years, Sharon worked as a disarmament campaigner and as the director, the director of Greenpeace in Israel. With the Israeli disarmament movement, Sharon represents ICANN and other international disarmament organizations in Israel, and she also serves on the coordinating committee of the Abolition 2000 Global Network to eliminate nuclear weapons. Please give a warm welcome to Sharon. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, Jackie is also one of the reasons I managed to come here, because I was denied a visa to the US, but then Jackie sent them some letters that were very convincing, I guess. Um, I'll try to make some connections. We'll start with the NPT. The NPT is a treaty that was very important for many states for many, many years, saying on one hand, no proliferation of nuclear weapons. Those states allowed to continue and have nuclear weapons, but there's a commitment to disarm. And the third leg of the NPT says, um, that they're encouraging, the big carrot is nuclear energy. Now, the NPT has stuck for many, many years in the same position. We are waiting for the nuclear armed states to say that they are willing to give a timeline to disarm, and it doesn't happen. Meanwhile, we can see what happens with nuclear energy, and yet nuclear energy is the big carrot. And in 1995, when the NPT came to kind of an end, or the end of its first period, because of the Arab states and the non-aligned movement, there was a decision made to um, have a nuclear free zone, nuclear weapon free zone in the Middle East. A great decision, but a hypocrite one, uh, because, and not the only hypocrite decision by the NPT, but a hypocrite decision by the NPT, because it's very nice to say that the Middle East will be nuclear free zone when the only nuclear uh, armed state, Israel, is not part of the NPT and therefore the decisions of the NPT has nothing to do with Israel uh, policies. The one good thing that happened from that is that there was a beginning of work towards a, a conference calling for a weapon of mass destruction free zone in the Middle East, meaning nuclear, chemical and biological weapons and the means of delivery. Now that is a bit more progressive or better because if we're thinking not just how to bash Israel, which is a great sport, but how to bring Israel to the table, it needs to be something that Israel also has something to, um, to gain. Meaning not just that Israel gives up its nuclear, uh, chemical and biological um, arsenals, according to foreign sources, but also uh, Israel can have something to do or something to say about um, any chemical or biological programs that might be in other states. So that was the decision taken in 2010 and since then everybody met together, it was very nice, uh, they achieved nothing, they couldn't even agree on an agenda. Not the only forum in the world that couldn't achieve an agenda, but here again they, they couldn't even achieve an agenda. Meanwhile, something much better happened. Civil society managed to bring states into what we are witnessing today, a nuclear ban treaty. And that's great. That's the best thing that we could have achieved. Ten years ago, people were laughing at us when we said that we will do it, right? It was a joke that we will bring the states to a nuclear ban negotiations. But not just that it's happening, it seems like it's a successful and civil society is in the room. But there's again one tiny, tiny, tiny problem. The nuclear armed states are not there. It's just a small problem. And like most problems, we will find a way to bring them because we're civil society, right? It's up to us. It's all up to us. So let's look at the nuclear armed states, what will bring them into the table, and what is the connection between this and uh, environment and peace. I will focus, of course, on the Middle East, but I'll explain why I'm focusing about on the whole Middle East and not just on Israel. We all know that the US will not disarm without Russia, right? It has to go together. We all know that India and Pakistan will have to do it together. What will Israel need? 
in order to bring Israel into the table. Israel not just need the rest of the world or the, next, the rest of the nuclear armed states to say, yes, we're going for it. Israel needs a regional solution. Israel is a small state surrounded by Arab states, and I'm not saying it to defend Israel. We can talk later about how horrible Israel is, but what, right now we want something from Israel, right? We want Israel to join these talks. So for Israel, we need a regional solution. This regional solution could have been the talks. However, the talks so far have been, uh, been done only by state representative, the state representative of Israel and the state representative of the Arab states. And if you'll show me a state representative with goodwill, I'll be surprised because Israel would like to keep the, the monopoly right as it is. And the Arab states, they don't really care about the Israeli arsenal, but it's much nicer to be able to bash Israel and to call Israel to join the NPT and disarm with no conditions and so on, when they know that it's not going to happen. So not very responsible behavior by those who are supposed to keep us safe. So again, it's up to us, civil society. What we've done is we took all the obstacles that the state said that are there, all the reasons that they say that it's impossible that made it, make it impossible to come up with a regional treaty. And as civil society, we decided to write a treaty, a very comprehensive treaty, and to show the methods and the ways that this, uh, that this can happen. A WMD, weapons of mass destruction, free zone in the Middle East. Now we are on the second stage. Now we're going to have round tables. The first one will be hosted by Scotland, hopefully in November. And when we bring experts from the Middle East to solve all the tiny problems that still exist with this treaty, but really tiny problems, like consensus. I said tiny, but it is solvable. We are civil society, we're flexible, and we want to achieve it, so we will find it. Now let's talk about the Middle East. What's there now? Yes, Israel with, with weapons of mass destruction. You have ISIS in Syria with chemical weapons, but we have something even, even much worse, the NPT. Because the NPT promised states that will be part of the NPT help to get nuclear, um, nuclear reactors for energy, right? And states made believe or become to believe that having nuclear technology makes them more prestige. So at least four states in the Middle East now are looking or are in the first steps to build nuclear reactors in the Middle East. Now what is in the Middle East? Shortage of water, drinking water, wars, missiles, um, non-state actors, everything that takes nuclear uh, energy and makes it by far more dangerous. Not to mention that the Middle East does have a very strong need for energy. Very strong need for energy. So what we propose here is something that is much safer. We proposed that not just that these states, without peace first, will start sitting and negotiating on a treaty. They can take the treaty, they can change it, they can do whatever they like. It was just one proposal, one way. But what we propose is to start already bringing experts together. And what we also offer is to start collaborations on renewable energy, peaceful energy, energy that will not kill. It's like killing the equiper, the, the, um, the water underneath, right? That's what this nuclear energy will do. So what we offer is already to start with these talks and start the collaboration to build, collabor to build partnerships between states that already talk. And what we offer is for these experts to sit together, make this much better, and we like other states and other international organizations to look at this, join us in our international meetings to make this one better, and try to uh, offer this to your own governments. Maybe they will adopt it, because we don't think that the Middle East states will adopt it first. So it's up to us, but it's also up to you. Thank you very much.